Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live. And today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Crane of Fortune stamp set bundle, which is one of the new ones. Well, newer ones. I keep calling it new, but it's not really so new anymore. <laughs> it's been around for a whole month already. Um, so this is from the Stampin' Up! Um, January to June 2022 mini catalog. And it is one of the pretty bundles, pretty new bundles from that um, catalog. So this is the card that I made for it. And um, it's a little more in the uh, kind of, I don't know, neutrally, I guess. Um, neutral, but I thought it was still pretty. I don't know. <laughs> when I was making this, my uh, younger daughter, or my older daughter, I'm sorry, was in the room with me. And she's like, I really like that, Mom. And so she said, that means that everybody else will probably hate it. Because nobody ever likes the ones that I like. So <laughs> she kind of cracked me up. So... Um, hey, Bree and Karen and Elise and Christy. I'm glad that you are here. Thanks so much for joining. Okay, and so Christy agrees with my daughter. So like I said, she she was all worried nobody was going to like it because she liked it. <laughs> so hey, Marilyn, thanks for joining. Hey, and Mary's here as well. All right, so this is the card. It's pretty clean and simple, which is kind of, that's my thing. <laughs> you know, a few layers, a little die cutting, a little stamping, and that's kind of it for the card. So hey, Jeannie, thanks for joining. So this is the stamp set if you haven't seen it. Um, it's got some beautiful images in it um sort of I, I think that's bamboo at least that's what i'm calling it and then these little dragonflies and obviously a crane and we've got the flowers um this is sort of a little shadow image that you can stamp underneath the crane um should you want him to be standing or her to be standing on something and then it's got some nice sentiments to go with it hey melanie and then we have got um, some pretty dies that coordinate with it. So I love it. You know, the dies cut out some of the stamped images. So we have the double dragonfly. This actually um, will cut both of them at once, and uh, which is nice. You can just stamp and die cut one time. And then we've got the little bamboo die cut, the crane die cut, and then the one that cuts around the flowers. And then there are some accessory pieces as well. So there's this really pretty sort of, I don't know, leafy, florally image um, that you can die cut. And then the little leaves here. And then again, this is sort of bamboo-ish looking to me. So I'm going to go with that it's bamboo. <laughs> so... Um, you wonder that wonder where that flower comes from okay well glad we found it all right um it is a really pretty flower and like i said i've seen it done in some beautiful colors um adding people using either a direct to you know using the marker to color it or using sponge daubers to add ink to it but it's a really pretty flower of course we're not using it today we're using the bird instead so <laughs> hopefully you like that just as well all right so hey pam thanks for joining as well all right, so that is the um, die set that we're using. A couple of other things that I used is I did, it's probably a little hard to see, and I'll hold it kind of still and try to tip it a little bit, and hopefully it'll catch it in the, the video, but I did emboss the white panel on here with the Tasteful Textiles 3D embossing folder. Um, so I did that after I added the ink to it, so I'll show you how I did that today. And what else? I also used these stitched rectangle dies. So I used the second largest one to cut out the two um, background panels on here. And one more die set. Apparently I was going a little crazy with the dies. Um, I used the messages die. I used this little rectangular, kind of scalloped rectangular opening in the messages die uh, to die cut the sentiment on my card front. So, all right. Um, hey, Jan, glad you're here. And um, this is one of those sets. It's a little different than than the um, other stamps and dies we have in the catalog. So it took me a minute to sort of, you know, play around with it and figure out what I wanted to do. And but I, overall, I liked it. It's a it's a really pretty set. So and I love the designer paper that goes with it. So we're going to play a little bit with that today, too. Before I get going, um, I did want to remind you that today, Stampin' Up! has, uh, and of course I'm all crazily crooked again. I don't know why I can't ever get it straight. So, hey, Linda, glad you're here as well. Um, making a card with that bundle. Okay, all right. Well, we'll be playing today, and hopefully I'll give you some good tips with it. So, um, so Stampin' Up! has just um, released today to for everyone to order the All Together uh, product collection, which has got some really cool, it's got a cool bundle, stamp set and dies. It's got some cute designer paper. And then we've got a new selection of blends. So yay for that. Always excited to see new blends, Mark. Hey, Mary Elizabeth, glad you're here from Georgia as well. Um, so this is the stamp set bundle. It is the Here Together stamp set, and then there is a, is a coordinating die set called Here For You Dies. Um, some of the dies, uh, some of the images, the ones that are kind of highlighted in a little bit lighter color, um, are cut out by the dies, and then there are a couple of standalone dies as well. You can get it as a bundle. You can get the items individually. You can get it as a whole product collection. Um, you can get the designer paper and the markers, you know, everything individually, so whatever it is that you would like. Um, um, you're welcome to order it however you'd like. So, um, but yeah, the, the um, blends are really nice because it's a lot of neutrals and good skin tone colors. So lots of fun to play with. 
All right, let's get working on the card. So I have got a Smoky Slate card base. Um, again, this is a card, I tend to cut them so that they're, they're um, top folding cards. If you prefer the side folding cards, you can certainly do it as an eight and a half by um, five and a half and score it at four and a quarter card base. Whatever your preferred card base is, that is what you can use. Um, then I've got my little, uh, like I said, what I'm calling bamboo. Y'all who, those of you who know flowers and plants and stuff can <laughs> correct me. Um, I certainly could be wrong on that, but I'm calling it bamboo because that's what it looks like to me. Um, I'm going to ink it with smoky slate ink, stamp it on um, the background panel here, and then I'm just going to stamp it randomly on the card front. Um, now, the nice thing about this card front is because it's mostly going to be covered by a larger panel, um, I don't necessarily need to worry about stamping every single place or every single spot on the card front. I can just sort of go along the edges with it like I'm doing here. And again, I'm going to try to remember each time to uh, stamp it on the scrap paper first because that's there's nothing worse than uh, having one image out of all of them be super, super uh, full strength and the rest of them not. <laughs> not that I've done that before, but yes, yes, I have. All right. Uh, so I think we'll stick this one up here and then we'll do maybe one more across the top and then I think we'll call it good. All right, Oop, maybe two more across the top. I think we'll do another one maybe right up here. Okay, we will call that good. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside and close up the ink pad before I put my fingers in it. And then I'm gonna scoot this over just a minute and talk to you about the designer paper. This is the Symbols of Fortune designer series paper. It is a 12 by 12 pack full of beautiful, beautiful um, gold foiled papers on one side. And then the other side has got, um, like this one has the clouds and the cranes on it, uh, but it's very, very pretty paper. Both sides of it, um, there is a little bit of Calypso coral in it, a little bit of black, um, a little bit of, uh, uh, soft succulent. I was going to call it soft seafoam, and I knew that was not the right color. Um, so a little bit of soft succulent in it as well. So it's a beautiful, beautiful pack of paper. Um, kind of just, there's crumb cake in it as well. So just sort of some, um, a little more subtle um, colors other than obviously your Calypso coral. That one's a little bit of a bright in there, but um, otherwise it's kind of neutral colors. I think there's the evening evergreen in it as well. So, all right, so I'm going to take this piece of designer series paper that I cut ahead of time with the second largest of the stitched rectangle dies. So it's this the second one here in the, the big, big pile of dies. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna stick it here on the card front, sort of at a little bit of an angle. Um, I don't know. I think Mary calls these jaunty angles. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good at all those words. So, hey, Debbie, uh, it is pretty paper and you do need to order it. <laughs> so there, <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right, I'm going to set that aside while I um, show you the, how I did the background on here. So I've got a blending brush and I've got soft succulent ink. And I'm just going to take my blending brush and put it on the soft succulent ink pad and kind of swirl it around. And then I'm going to come back to my basic white cardstock panel. Um, this one is... is uh, I don't know, I'd say it's probably four and a half by five and a half ish. It's just a random piece of um, basic white cardstock that I had that was left over after trimming off a couple of other things. So um, I knew it was big enough for what I needed, so that's why I used it. I didn't really have, like I said, no specific sizes on it. It just needs to be bigger than your die cut. So while I'm adding the ink, um, as you can see, what I'm doing is I go to the ink pad with a blending brush, and then I come over here just to make sure I don't have any globs of ink, and then I go to my cardstock. Um, I do find that if I take the blending brush and go straight to the cardstock, sometimes you end up with a dark spot that you may not necessarily want or love <laughs> on your um, the background. I wanted it to be kind of a little bit of a more subtle background, so I didn't want to have any of the real dark circles or swirls or anything on it. So I find that if I kind of tap it over on my scrap paper first, that takes the the um, really dark dark ink out of it and just sort of lets the, the rest of the ink blend in. And I hope I'm not completely wiggling the whole screen as I'm doing this. So while I'm doing this, I guess I can tell you about celebration that is going on right now with Stampin' Up! For every order that you place of $50 or greater, you're gonna start earning some free goodies from Stampin' Up! Um, for celebration. There's a specific brochure that they have um, that has a bunch of really cool free items in it. Stamp sets, designer papers. There's a stamp set bundle with designer paper and a stamp set in it. Um, so lots of good things in there. So if you're interested in ordering, that would be awesome. And you can get, if you order $50 or greater, you can start earning some awesome free things from Stampin' Up!
They also have a joining special going on right now where you get two free stamp sets of your choice if you join as a demonstrator. Um, so the starter kit is $99 and the shipping is free on it. Um, you do pay tax if that applies in your area. Um, and then you get two free stamp sets with it. You get to pick $125 worth of merchandise um, and you just pay the 99, get your free stamp sets. And then you get the demonstrator discount on everything that you order after that. So it's an awesome deal. Um, no requirement to sell to anybody or uh, anything like that. So if you're not interested in that side and only want to get the discount for yourself, we'd love to have you come join us. We've got a whole team full of, um, majority of them are happy shoppers is what I'll call them. So just getting the discount for themselves, which is awesome. So, all right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same die that I cut the background panel for the card, um, the designer paper panel, and I'm just going to cut this piece of basic white cardstock. I'm going to try to keep the what I did for blending to the sort of lower right area of it, but again, it's not going to be perfect, and it'll be a little different with each one. So I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine, which is off to my, my left, my other right, I guess. <laughs> so hopefully y'all are enjoying your Tuesday. It's uh, warming up here a little bit in uh, New Jersey, and I hear just in time for the kind of middle of the country to get a big snowstorm an ice storm potentially, so it sounds like you guys are gonna have some of that yucky weather. Throwing things around, okay, so I have got that die cut done. The next thing I did was I embossed it with the Tasteful Textiles 3D embossing folder, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in here. If you're not familiar with the Stampin' Up! embossing folders, hopefully you can see there's a little um, black line across it that runs right through the middle of the Stampin' Up! logo. Um, if you line up your paper, even with that line, then you know that you're gonna have it embossed straight. This embossing folder doesn't matter quite as much because it's not a really truly straight up and down design, but um, if it is one where it matters whether the lines go straight on it or not, um, you'll definitely wanna use that as your little guide to help you to line things up. Um, the other thing that um, the layering I sometimes get questions on, or layering, the sandwich, I guess, is what I meant to say, not layering. Uh, the sandwich, sometimes I get questions on. Um, so this is the stamp and cut and emboss machine base platform. There are other um, die cutting machines out there that have basically the same size platform on it. So just use the base platform, and then you're gonna put your um, cardstock inside the 3D embossing folder. So this is the sandwich for 3D folders. So inside your 3D embossing folder, and then you're gonna take the um, specialty plate, which you can purchase um, on its own, it's $10, and uh, it's an awesome deal, and this will help you to get perfectly embossed panels um, every time that you use it. So um, you'll definitely want to do that <laughs> if you're uh, using the 3D embossing folders and struggling to get them to emboss nicely. All right, so I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine as well. So now we have an embossed and die cut panel, which is, um, I sort of like the look of it. I wanted something um, not, not quite plain, but you know, not anything that was really gonna stand out and um, show as an obviously embossed panel. So hopefully you can see it. I know it's a little hard um, when it's on video to see what it looks like. Somebody said it almost looks like a paper towel, which is kind of correct, it almost does. It's, it's a very muted embossing, but it's really, really pretty. Um, it just gives it a nice background. So, all right, so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna adhere it to the card front as well at a little angle the opposite way. So, hey, Janelle, thanks for joining. Glad you're here as well. All right, and then I wanna take it and I wanna make sure that my, the part that I added the, the blending ink to is on the, again, the lower right. I'm struggling with rights and lefts today. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna take this and adhere it sort of at the opposite angle that I adhered the um, larger panel on the card front. All right, so we're gonna stick that down with the stamp and seal. Next up, I did a little bit of die cutting ahead of time. So this actually is cut from the gold and rose gold shimmer, or I'm sorry, gold and rose gold metallic specialty paper is what this is called. And it's really, really pretty. It's just sort of a nice shimmery gold, but it's not glittery. Um, so it doesn't leave a mess or anything. It's just a really pretty kind of shimmery gold paper. And then I cut these from soft succulent and I cut them with the um, good fortune dies, which um, I use this one for the soft succulent and this one for the gold die cuts. So that's part of the bundle that we're playing with today. And I'm gonna grab some glue dots here and 
adhere them the um, die cuts to the card front and just stick it again take a little glue dot stick it down here and I think we'll stick one more sort of in the center of it right in there yep I think I got it okay and then I'm going to take that and adhere it to the card front. I'm going to kind of try to tuck it in where I had it, where I think it belongs. I'm not going to smoosh anything down too, too tightly yet because I can still lift up the glue dots generally um, and reposition things if I get everything put together and then decide that um, I need to move something around a little bit because the larger die cut doesn't layer over the top as well as I want it to. Uh, let me grab another glue dot here for this one. Put it under the smaller plant, smaller leaf. I'm going to tilt that one and sort of tuck it in here. And then we'll do the third one and add it pointing the other way uh, over the top of the gold die cut. So, all right, let me grab, flip that one over and stick it over here. Maybe not stick it to my fingers. That would be good. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so next up we're going to do a little stamping. And I've got, again, just basic white cardstock. And I've got the crane image here on a block and smoky slate ink. Um, that's the color that I used for the bird. And just going to ink that up. And again, going to take a second to make sure that it's good and inky before I put it down on the paper. And if we don't get a perfect image, you know, we always have the other side. All right, so I'm going to take that and stamp it here on the basic white cardstock. All right, there we go. I think we got a pretty decent image on that one. And close this up before I put my fingers in it because I'm known to do that um, far too often. <laughs> and I have ink everywhere. All right, uh, then I'm gonna grab the die again. So this again is the Good Fortune die, Good Fortune's dies. And um, they coordinate perfectly. It will cut out the little crane image. It's not terribly tricky to line this up. Just be aware um, where I started at was to line up the, the legs first and then sort of shifted the top of it around a little bit so that um, holding the legs in place and then shifted the top of it so that it's gonna cut it out correctly. Um, otherwise you'll end up with kind of a wonky looking bird and you don't want a wonky bird. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna cut that, run that through my die cutting machine over here. And hopefully I can get it lined up and not end up with a crazy bird. But the bonus is if we do end up with a crazy bird, I can always cut it again. Right. I think we got it pretty decent. All right, so I'm gonna take that and um, put my die away before I lose track of that. All right, so we've got our little bird here die cut. And I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use, believe it or not, some mini Stampin' Dimensionals, which I know I never use these. But the little, um, I don't know, like the head on the bird, I needed to put something smaller on. And I could have used my other Dimensionals, but I don't know, I was struggling with those. <laughs> they weren't working either. So I actually had to take one of the mini ones and chop it down to make it fit here on the little joint behind the knees. Do birds have knees? I don't know, whatever you call that. On the legs, back of the bend of the leg. <laughs> they're backwards knees, I don't know. Again, I'm not really a bird or a plant person. I just think they're pretty. So, hey, Kate, thanks so much, I appreciate that. All right, so used a couple of regular dimensionals, a couple mini dimensionals. I didn't worry too much about putting things on the, um, the little feet of the bird, or the, yeah, the feet of the bird. Um, just because I'm gonna be layering my sentiment over the top of that area. And so I know that the sentiment will kind of hold the, the little feet in place. So, all right, so I'm gonna take my bird and then I'm gonna put it down here on the card front and wanted it so that it's angled a little bit so that it's kind of straight with the panel, if that makes sense. So if you're looking at this panel straight, your bird would look fairly straight if you put it on there. All right, stick that down. Okay, we've got the little bird stuck on. Um, next up, we're gonna do some stamping for the sentiment. I've got a little um, scrap piece of basic white cardstock, and I used basic gray ink, so it's a slight, slight bit darker than the smoky slate um, for the sentiment. And again, the sentiment is from the Crane of Fortune stamp set. They look like knees to you. Okay, so I'm not the only one who <laughs> It was crazy then and, and thinks that the birds have knees because, like I said, I'm sure there's probably some official term for it, but I don't know what it is. We'll call them bird knees. <laughs> I like it, Jillian. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got our sentiment stamped. And again, I used the uh, one of the openings from the messages dies. 
and this is the one in particular that I used. And this is why I, I used a little bit smaller piece of cardstock. I could have even cut it down more um, just because I was going to be cutting with this die and it's going to cut everything whether I want it to or not. Um, so just want to make sure that I have this centered in the opening and then the rest of it can be scrap paper um, because I'm not going to be using it for anything else. I'm run that through my die cutting machine over here. All right, and hopefully I've got to get it lined up straight before I can run it through. All right, so the only thing to be aware of on these larger dies like this as you're doing your die cutting is make sure that you've got it on the edge of your plate. If you don't, you can actually completely mangle the die. And again, I know that from experience because I've done it before and then you cry a little because your die is ruined. <laughs> and uh, you know, so don't do that. <laughs> That's my only recommendation is just be aware that as you're putting the, the die onto the plate, make sure that you're really careful and making sure that it's all on the plate um, because the dies actually really nicely go right around the side of the plate and then you've got a die that's got like a 90 degree turn in it where it's not supposed to. So. Um, just be aware of that. That's all I want you to be when you're using the larger dies. Just be careful with them. All right, so I've got my sentiment die cut here. I'm going to grab my stamp at dimensionals, and we'll stick a couple of those on the back. And adhere that to the card front. Now, the only trick with this is that I wanted the sentiment to be straight with the bottom and the edge of the, <laughs> the card and not straight with the, the angled panel. So it's one of those things where you kind of have to look at it and try to judge straightness along, <laughs> along this line and straightness along the bottom. So I'm going to set it down on here and then I'm going to take a piece of paper. I'm going to line this up on the bottom of my grid line and then take a piece of paper line it up on another grid line and go, yep, that looks fairly straight to me. So it's not too, too crazy, um, not too crazy crooked. I think I've got it good, so I'm gonna smoosh it down and make sure that it's stuck. So that's how I, <laughs> that was the trick that I did when I was putting it together, um, was just making sure that I had um, sort of lined it up and used that little trick, sort of like a ruler. So, all right, I've got my uh, take your pick tool and I'm gonna be putting a couple of the little gold pearls from the metallic pearls pack. Just sort of randomly sticking them around here on the card front. Um, and with these little pearls and things, I generally tend to try to set them down a little bit softly on my card front until I get everything put down and have decided that everything is where I want it to be. And then once I say, yep, I like it, um, then I smoosh them down. If I don't like it, this gives me the opportunity to be able to move them around a little bit if I don't love the way the layout turned out, but I think this is gonna be okay. Um, Okay, and I have to be honest, and hopefully y'all won't laugh at me. I had a question about this one and whether I should put this down here because I didn't want it to look like the bird had left it there, if you understand what I mean by that. Hopefully y'all do. I don't want to get into too graphic details, but <laughs> as I was putting it together, my daughter was laughing at me because um, I couldn't decide where to put the, the, the fifth little um, dot because we were both afraid it was going to look like he'd left it there. Um, anyway, I was glad they weren't brown. That's all I can say. Gold, I thought, well, you know, I don't, I don't know. Gold probably isn't such a bad thing. <laughs> so, all right, so I've got my little crane here. And again, I inked it in smoky slate ink. And I'm going to take it along the edge of my um, basic white cardstock for the inside of my card. And we're going to stamp it here. All right, looking like the crane is kind of getting ready to walk across the uh, piece of paper. All right. I'm going to flip it over, add a little bit of stamp and seal to the background or to the back of it, and we're going to be all done with this card for today. So thanks so much for joining. I appreciate you being here and listening to me carry on and fumble through this a golden egg. That was not what I was thinking about when I um, <laughs> eggs were, were not what I was concerned it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> if if that makes sense, I don't know. Like I said, um, we were laughing a little bit last night, but you know. Poop jokes are funny at our house. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, yes, you're right. At least it's not on the windshield of the car. You are correct on that. 
Janelle. So, <laughs> all right. So thanks again for joining and listening today. I appreciate you all being here. Um, I'm glad. Thanks so much, Brie. I'm glad you like the card. Like I said, it's a little different than, you know, my normal style of cards, but I do love it. I mean, I love that designer paper. I love the colors in it. I love the neutrals and um, the little touches of gold. I thought were beautiful with it. So uh, thanks for being here today. I appreciate you all joining. And um, I will plan to see you all on Friday around 2 o'clock Eastern time on my YouTube channel. And then back here live on Facebook around 2 o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday. Have a wonderful rest of your week and we will chat soon.